Say hi. Hey doers, my name is Frank. Follow along and you'll learn how I built this essential oil cabinet for my wife. Here I'm just measuring these oil bottles to see how big I want to make the shelves in the cabinet. Then I go ahead and rough cut some African mahogany and maple that I'll glue together to make the sides, top, and bottom of the cabinet. It's pretty awesome to keep finding good uses for this old maple. This is an old door frame that I'm taking apart here. I'll take a few quick passes with the hand plane to give myself a flat edge to ride against the table saw fence. And then I'll rip some strips of maple that I'll glue in between some mahogany later to give it a good color contrast. And I'll do the same with the mahogany. Now I'll go ahead and run these pieces across the joiner. The main purpose of the joiner is to give it a flat bottom so it can make twisted boards flat. Uh, if you run a twisted board through the planer, it's gonna come out twisted. You need that bottom edge to be flat to ride across the bed of the planer and then in turn, the top of that board will then be flat as well. Now that everything's flat and straight, it's time to glue these up. After the glue up, I need to repeat the milling process to get these to their final dimensions and thickness. For the construction of this cabinet, I'm going to use spline miter joinery. So here I am cutting 45s into all these pieces. Now let's switch out to a dado blade and cut some dados in these pieces. The channel that we cut here will house the solid maple panels that we'll make later on in this video. Now let's cut some stop dados that will house the shelving that we'll make later. Here I'm using a square clamp down to the table as a fence for the palm router to write across. Here I'll stop just short of my line and then I'll finish the cut with a chisel. Now let's get busy making these shelves. Let's set up the bandsaw to do some resawing. We'll cut these pieces in half. Next, we'll go ahead and run these through the planer. Now let's cut the components of the shelves. Here I'm just making a little jig to help out with the glue up of the shelves. This is an old 2x6. That lip I left on there is going to help keep this down on the surface when I clamp it. And then I'll use the table saw fence to aid in the clamping. I cut some pieces of scrap wood at a 45. Then I'm using hot glue to glue them onto my workpiece. 
This hot glue will come off easily later, but it'll help me to apply good clamping pressure for these 45 degree corners. And right here, I'm just clamping it together, dry fitting it just to take some measurements to see how long I need the shelves to be and, and also how big I need the maple panels to be. And I'll just use calipers to figure out the thickness of these shelves. And here I'll just sneak up on it with the hand plane. And once I have the thickness worked out, I'll go ahead and cut these shelves to their final dimensions. Now let's go ahead and make these solid maple panels. Um, I didn't know it going into it, but this maple has a little bit of a curl to it, so we're going to try to do a book match on these. This is just some more of that reclaimed maple that I'm so thankful I was able to get my hands on. And you know the drill here, just making everything flat and the same thickness so we can glue these panels together. And here we'll use some blue painter's tape to tape these panels together. On camera I'm only including gluing up one of these panels just to save time on the video but everything I did on this one I did on the other one so you'll get the picture. While the glue dries I'll go spend some time with the kids. She's a champion. <laughs> Now that the glue's dried, we'll cut these panels to their final dimensions. Now these pieces are a little bit too wide to fit into my planer, so I'll go ahead and use my drum sander. If you don't have a drum sander, that's okay. You can use a hand plane to, to flatten these out and make them, make them look good. And I'll go ahead and pre-finish all these internal pieces. This will save me time later, but it'll also help out with glue cleanup because I can't clean up, obviously, inside of a sealed box once this is glued together. Off camera, I went ahead and made these little brackets to hold the shelves in place for the glue up. Once I slide that top maple panel in, I won't be able to see what I'm doing, so these will hold them right in the right spot. Alright, now that all these shelves are going to be held in place, let's glue this thing together. And then I'll just go ahead and use a chisel to get these pieces of pine off of here and then scrape off that hot glue. But you can do it carefully to where you don't damage your work piece. Now I'm switching out to a single dado blade. The reason I'm doing this is because it cuts a flat bottom groove. A regular table saw blade will cut a V channel and I want these splines to sit flush in there. So here's a little spline cutting jig that I made off camera. It's just quick and dirty. This jig is loosely based off of Jay Bates' design. If you want to know how to make his spline cutting jig, just go ahead and go over to his channel and check it out. It'll give you some good ideas. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Now let's cut up some spline stock. 
since these mitered corners are end grain to end grain it's not a very strong joint by adding splines you're introducing side grain to side grain glue points so it makes it way stronger Since this cabinet is symmetrical, I'm, I made marks to orientate myself as to where the top is, where the back is. That way when I cut it, it's going to be in the right spot. I don't want to cut through the shelves and I need to cut it right in the right spot. So here I am uh, cutting through the box. This is a little bit nerve wracking after all that work, but uh, it turned out pretty good. I put some thin pieces of wood into the kerf that I had cut. This will reduce binding on my last cut. Here I'm using the drum sander to clean up any saw marks or imperfections that happened during cutting the lid off of it. And you can totally do this with a plane. I've never really used CA glue before, but I've always kind of wanted to. I just never got around to buying any of it. Well, not too long ago, Starbond Adhesive reached out to me and was wondering if I would try their products out if they sent me some and feature them in a video if, if I liked their products. Well, I ended up liking their products and as you can see throughout the rest of the video, I used their CA glue quite a bit, and it came in really handy. Um, if you guys ever end up wanting any of this stuff, there's a link in the description. Um, click that link and uh, go to their website and order whatever you want. And um, at checkout, make sure you use the coupon code FRANKDOESIT to get 10% off. That stuff did work really well for me, and, and it really helped me accomplish some of these hard cuts, especially... Um, here in a little bit you'll see me cut out some mortises for the hinges and I didn't really have any support for my router and, and uh, basically I used their product along with these little jigs I made to basically make myself a little support table to cut those mortises. Here I am making a little mark on these screws and I'll go grind it down to this mark. I don't want to screw these too deep into the material so I'm going to shorten these up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and cut these hinge mortises. I just took my palm router and stayed as close to that line as I could without threatening to go over it. And then I just used the chisel to clean up the mortise. Now I'm just using these quick and dirty jigs I made as a little backstop for the hinges. That way when I try to mark my hinges, I'll just squeeze them up against that backstop so that I know that they're all three in the same spot. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on this magnetic catch system. i got to cut a little mortise for this uh, metal plate. I need to cut another mortise for this to sit in so it sits flush when this is closed and it'll look good. And as you can see I messed up my layout line. So now I just got an extra little line there, but that's all right.
Here's another cool trick for that CA glue. Put the wood glue there and then the CA glue and then the CA glue acts as a clamp. You don't have to wait for the wood glue to dry. I just secured these little magnets with friction and a little bit of CA glue. I ended up using a spray-on lacquer for this. It ended up working out really well. Um, it's a pretty good finish and it sprayed well. It's, it's depth lacquer. These little fasteners are pretty cool and they're what I use to attach this thing to my wall. I ended up using thumbtacks and I stuck them through these little holes that way it made it easier to mark where I needed to drill the holes when I push it into the drywall here. And here my beautiful help meet helps me out with getting this thing level. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you want to see my last build, go ahead and click up here. If you want to see a playlist of my builds, go ahead and click down here. And if you want to see what I got going on in the shop in between these videos and what I have going on in my personal life, go ahead and follow me on my social media accounts that are written right down here. And thanks for coming by, guys. God bless you.